All right. So today I would like to speak about a really important subject for us to understand, as as we learned this.、Um, Actually, as we sang this song in Matthew twenty four fourteen, that we will be witnesses, and many people are like, "Well, yes, witnesses, but how am I going to be a witness? How can I really represent Christ, and how can I really go out and share, or or what does that mean? And am I supposed to do this alone? Well, th- those are really good questions. So, what we're going to go into today is we're going to learn about successful soul winning, and We're gonna learn the principle about two are better than one. Now, with my experience, I would like to share a little bit of my testimony because when I first started, I was kind of like, well, I was, I was at a point that I understood that I had to share with other people, but the problem is that I was. I was like, okay, I need to share with others. So what I need to do, I'm gonna go and I'm gonna take the all the study guides that I can and all the prophecies and everything, and I'm gonna study them so much. So I started studying those guides and I started going through the Bible and really trying to getting so acquainted with the scriptures. And be, before I could even do a Bible study with anybody, or before I could, I could do anything. So what happened is that. I was like going through that, and I was trying to to learn and learn and learn and learn, but then I felt disappointed because I realized that I was forgetting. I couldn't remember what I was learning, and I that was frust fr- that was frustrated. Be- I was really frustrated because I'm like I'm spending this time to study the scriptures and understanding them, and I feel like I'm coming to this wall that I cannot go past. And I'm like, but I want to share with others. So that was really, really a problem for me. Cause, I mean, wouldn't wouldn't you feel frustrated if you like be if you would like study so much, and then you would just forget it? Well, that was was that's what was happening to me. But then, as I was learning that 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 method wasn't working, I saw learning that Christ had a method that actually worked. And I was like, "Huh, interesting." So I realized that learning about Christ's method is going to be it, you're going to have success because he was the most successful su- successful missionary that was in this world. So I was like, "Why not learn from him?" So what did he do? What did he do with his disciples? Because I felt kind of like, "Okay, I'm I'm in the place of a disciple right now." So how did he teach his disciples? So. One th- one of one thing of his teachings, it was that his disciples were not actually sitting in a classroom and learning a bunch of things, and after the school is done, they can go out and share. That was actually not his method. His method was a little different. He would take his disciples with him. They would go out. Jesus would share with people. As Jesus was working, as Jesus was healing and preaching and teaching, the disciples were right there with him, and he was able to see it. They were able to see it, and just as they started, when Jesus called the disciples, he actually started pairing them by two so that they would have partners. And Christ understood a really important principle that he was using with the disciples. And for me, it was really easy to use the traditional method of studying, which is like you know when we when we are at school, you're just sitting down, you're at this classroom, and then you're gonna learn, you're gonna go through years of of schooling, and then you go into the field. But Christ was not like that. Christ was like, you're in the field, and we're learning. So one of the principles that he was using so that this would work well, this method, is something found in Ecclesiastes Ecclesiastes four. Uh, verse nine and ten, and it says two are better than one, because they have a good reward for their labor. For if they fall, the one would lift up his fellow, but woe to him that is alone when he falleth, for he hath no, not another to help him up. So then, what Christ did, he was using this. I mean, he understood that two are better than one, and 
that whenever we're placed in by two by two with a partner, we have a good reward from our labor. So let's understand more of what this that what what it means. So I would like to share with you here in Mark six verse seven. This is a training of the twelve. And here is talking about here it says, and he called unto him the twelve. This is when Christ would call the twelve disciples, and began to send them forth two and two, and gave them power over unclean spirits. Wow, that was fast. Like he just called these twelve disciples and then he just put them two by two. He's like, Okay, let's go. And because he understood it's like the gospel has to go. And why did he put these people two by two? But before that, I'm going to read this other verse, actually. The 70 disciples. So there were 12 disciples, and then there were other, like, 70 disciples that were really right there with Christ. They really wanted to, to learn. So another thing that happened there is, it says, And after, in Luke 10, After these things, the Lord appointed other 70 also, and he sent them two and two before his face in every city and place whither him he himself would come. So, what's going on here with these two and two? How did Christ pair them? Why did he do that? First of all, we'll see why because, I mean, Ecclesiastes is, is already showing how it's important to go two by two. Now, what he did, Christ pair each disciples like it's kind of like John was was with with Peter John that is so mild and he is so so gentle and then Peter is so bold and impulsive so then Christ put them together even though they were opposite so that they can, can complement each other and that way Peter just doesn't go out and super untactful and like just kind of kind of talk about talk their ears off and and John is able to be there and kind of quiet him down so that was a good pair and Christ was doing that with everybody and that way the 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 defects of one were partially covered by the virtues of another so that was really encouraging so as I understood that I was like wow so Christ has this method about putting people together that are kind of opposites so that they can complement each other and they can go out and just really help each other. And then another thing that I learned is in 1 Corinthians 12, 18 through 22. And it says, but now, let me pull it up here actually. But now hath God sent, set the members, every one of them in the body as it hath pleased him. And if they were all one member, where were the body? And now, but now, are they many members, yet but one body? And the eye cannot, the eye cannot say unto the hand, I have no need of thee, nor again the, the head to the feet, I have no need of you. Nay, much more those members of the body, which seem to be more feeble, are necessary. So, this is talking about diversity of gifts, because everybody has different gifts. Just how Paul was more more bold to go into a place that maybe John would, would be more shy. Well, still, that's a gift. And John had a gift of being more tactful and feeling, you know, like really thinking about others even more about their feelings. So, by us being together, it's, it's so important because of those diversity of gifts. And what I learned is that... The reason why this this um, method is put in place is so that we can go out before we need to learn every single lesson of the Bible, every single thing in the Bible to be able to share with others. And because as we go with another partner, we are able to learn as we go. And that's how we learn. It's in the, in the water that man learned how to swim. And I would like to go over some pairs that were... Um, that were really successful in in the Christian world. It's not only from the Bible because the Waldenses, they were in Europe and they were really persecuted um, by the the Catholic Church. And they were they were missionaries in the mountains and they were able to go two by two. They all had their their partner and sometimes 
the two would separate whenever it was necessary. They, they were able to separate and come together when there was a hard time or to pray, to counsel together. So that means that whenever we have a partner to go and to study with other people, it doesn't mean that we're always going to be together at the same time. It's not like yeah, you're just inseparable and you can't do Bible studies alone uh, with somebody else. But it means that you would have a partner that you could come to, you can counsel, and um, you can learn together. That's really encouraging. Paul and Barnabas were together. Moses and Caleb. Um, and we already went to the 70 that were two by two. And James and John, they were together. Elisha and Elijah. Peter and Andrew. Paul and Timothy. Um, Luther and I'm not sure how to pronounce that Melanchthon. name Melanchthon David and Jonathan Huss and Jerome and with Huss and Jerome it's really interesting because it's saying these were two reformers and um, one of them again they were their their characters were opposite and once they got together the gospel was able to spread even further and faster because they were they were actually working together so we can go further by working together and Jesus and John the Baptist even though weren't they were not really together but they both had a message that were complementing each other so that they could do their work okay and I would like to go over really quickly this is the last thing it's that for me was really encouraging because I was like well I'm so inexperienced I don't know what to do and I don't know I don't remember these Bible studies. I don't know how to answer these Bible questions that people would ask me. And, you know, the same way Moses felt when when he was wandering in the wilderness. Not wandering, but being in the wilderness for about 40 years. Um, God appeared to him into a burning bush. And in Exodus 4, verse, verse 10 through 13, it's talking about how how God is is telling him, I need you to go and talk to the Pharaoh and tell him that I want my people. But Moses is like, well, I am not eloquent. I'm not, I don't know how to speak. I'm slow of speech. I'm slow of tongue. Like he doesn't know how to speak correctly. He's like, how am I going to go over Pharaoh and tell him all these things when I don't even know how to speak? And God is like, didn't I make your body? Didn't I make man's mouth didn't I make the dumb or death or the seeing or the blind for I am the Lord and and Moses is like no 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 I don't want to do this and then God is like well don't you have a brother named Aaron he knows has how to speak he knows he doesn't have he's not slow of speech and and so he was um, Aaron his brother had the qualities that Moses didn't have. So then God put Moses and Aaron together to go before the Pharaoh. And God said, I'm going to give you the words to say to you and Aaron. So that's amazing. That was so encouraging to me because I'm like, wow, yeah, I cannot go alone. But if I have a partner that knows that is more experienced, then it's going to help me to learn and to see what am I supposed to do. So that's really encouraging. And I would encourage you that you you do not you don't have to be afraid of of sharing the gospel if god has has commissioned each of us to share with others even if it's a friends families whoever um he has also put a plan that it could help us and answer all these questions that we have it's like how do i do it if i don't know anything and god has put, has put this this plan in place to go two and two and to be able to learn from another, and to be able to complement each other, to be able to pray for another, and to move forward. And that was my testimony. Once I started having a Bible worker partner, I was able to give so many more Bible studies, and I was able to, to learn so much more about tactfulness, what to say, what not to say, and that's, that's God's plan, and He's able to bless in those times.